It's that time of year when companies reveal how much they pay their male and female employees. But myths about the gender pay gap are still holding the conversation back. Men and women won't sort themselves into the same categories. So what are some of the most common ones? One, there is no gender pay gap. I'm hung up on the fact that these new pay gap measurements are incredibly misleading and frankly useless. None of them break down jobs, age, background. You have not proven any kind of gender pay gap. It is true that the information the gender pay gap reveals is limited. Data analysts work it out by taking all the men's wages, all the women's wages and line them up from highest to lowest. They then compare the number in the middle, the median. Last year, the calculation revealed that the median woman is paid less than the median man across all sectors in the UK. Now that we know that, we can start to ask deeper questions like, why are there more women in lower paid jobs than men? Two, women inevitably earn less because they have children. Men and women have different careers and different paths through the workforce. This might be a problem, but there also might be legitimate reasons why men and women might go off into different jobs and have different levels in their career. Some people admit that there's a gender pay gap, but say that women can't expect to earn as much as men if they're taking time out to have children. There is some truth here. The pay gap for full-time employees between the ages of 18 to 39 is close to zero. It widens from the age of 40. That suggests that life events like having a baby impact a woman's progression. But does it have to be this way? Men also have children, but the impact on their careers is virtually non-existent. That doesn't mean they don't pay a price though. Many men say, well, I have work and I support my family, but I see my family very little. I would like to be much more involved. So what's the alternative? In other European countries, they have a dedicated leave period for just for dads that's properly paid so it reflects their salaries more accurately. And then more dads take it. They then get more involved in the business of raising children at home. Businesses get more used to the fact that actually men might take time out of work as well as women. And that begins to change some of the perceptions of whether women are a risk in an organisation or not. Three, women work in industries that pay less. I've already seen that in Scandinavia. It's 20 to so, 1 female nurses to male, something like that. Men and women won't sort themselves into the same categories if you leave them alone to do it off their own accord. People who argue that women become nurses because they're more nurturing by nature are ignoring the massive social and economic factors that shape the workforce. For example, there's an assumption that men have always been the main family providers, but this notion actually emerged in the mid-19th century. Women contributed to hard physical labour up until then, but the Industrial Revolution changed work for men and women. In 10, 20, 100 years from now, the workforce will look very different, and no one, including Jordan Peterson, knows the impact gender will have on career choices. Despite what the sceptics say, the UK government is acknowledging the gender pay gap and is suggesting changes that companies can make to level things out, like making sure women are shortlisted for senior roles, being transparent about pay and promotions, and encouraging men to take shared parental leave so that everyone, no matter their gender, can enjoy a better work-life balance.